This is a pair of crying eyes. It hides an amazing secret behind. The author of this painting is Margaret, and she is attending her first interview in life. But the interviewer doesn't even look at her work and asks Margaret one question. So your husband approves of you working? Margaret is too nervous to speak because she just divorced her husband last month and brought her daughter here. In the last century, the status of women was not as free as it is now. For them, it was incredible for women to go out to work with no choice but to support her daughter. Margaret could only go to the park stall painting, a portrait for $2, and no one asked for it all day long. When the sun was about to set, she assured in her first customer, and the deal was finally made for $1. Margaret's painting style is unique. All the children in the painting have a pair of large eyes. Seeing this, Walter, a painter on the sidelines, came forward and accosted Margaret, believing that she had underestimated her talent. Walter's glib appearance made Mary laugh, and he took the opportunity to ask about her. Margaret didn't think much of it and told Walter that she was divorced and alone with her children. Walter invited Margaret to dinner, saying that he graduated from the Paris Academy of Arts and was still single and in pursuit of art. Now, he is a real estate agent with a good income, but his greatest wish is to become an artist. Margaret found Walter humorous and artistic and gradually opened her heart to the man. From then on, Walter came to Margaret every day talking to her and showing her his work. Margaret also liked Walter, but her daughter did not like this man. She always felt Walter was up to no good. Margaret didn't take her daughter's words to heart. She felt she was just a single mother and had nothing to worry about. That afternoon, Walter came to Margaret's house again, and Margaret had just received a lawyer's letter from her ex-husband asking for her daughter. Because Margaret doesn't have a proper home and a job, her husband believed Margaret could not afford to support her daughter. Margaret was at a loss, and Walter, beside her, was crispy on one knee, saying, Marry me. Margaret was stunned. She was so excited that her eyes filled with tears. She accepted his proposal as soon as her head was hot. Walter held a giant wedding for Margaret, who was very moved. Even though her best friend told her that Walter was a scumbag, Margaret felt lucky to find a man willing to accept her and her daughter. After marriage, Margaret's paintings were all signed with his last name Keen. He also prepared a separate studio for her to paint in peace. In order to sell these paintings, he went to a bar that he frequented and rented a wall to display. He also took publicity photos for this purpose, but the effect was not good. The wall rented to him by the bar owner is close to the bathroom, and he keeps at the door of the bathroom every day, waiting for others to consult. On this day, he met a noble woman, but the other party was only willing to buy the wife's painting of a girl with big eyes. Frustrated, Walter went on a drunken rampage at the bar and argued with the bar owner. In confusion, Walter was so angry that he picked up one of his wife's paintings and smashed it heavily on the head of the bar owner. The image was captured by a gossip reporter and made headlines that day. The bar was also packed with people who came to see the painting that made the two men fight, and the Big Eyes series painting was snatched up. At this time, Margaret was still asleep at home. Walter took out a handful of bills and excitedly told Margaret that we had succeeded. Margaret is very happy to see that her paintings are liked by everyone, and she begins to paint day and night. That day, as soon as she finished painting, she came to the bar to find Walter with her work, only to see him pretending to be the author, boasting his creativity to the people next to him. Margaret asked her husband, Why are you lying? Startled, Walter quickly pulled Margaret into the corner and explained that it was all for her. Think about it, you are a woman. If people knew that these paintings were painted by a housewife, who would be willing to pay a high price for them? How can I support you and your daughter if no one buys your painting? Margaret hesitated. She felt that her husband seemed to have a point. 
Walter continued, we are a couple, what is mine is yours and what is yours is mine. I'm doing this to sell these paintings, so why care so much? The inarticulate Margaret was persuaded. She knew her husband was lying but didn't know how to refute it. At that moment, a noise interrupted the two. The owner of an advertising company came to admire the big guy's work on the wall, and he asked who was the author of the paintings. Margaret was tempted to step forward and respond, but thinking about what Walter had said, she eventually remained silent. Then Walter stepped forward and told the boss that he was the author. Looking at the scene in front of her, Margaret was trembling. These paintings were like her children, part of her life. But in such a male-dominated society, she did not dare to stand up and expose her husband. Margaret returned home in a state of distress. Walter rushed to comfort Margaret to paint her a bright future. Walter said, when you painted in the park, you couldn't even sell it for two dollars. Now a painting can be sold for hundreds of dollars. You think this is why, not how well you paint, but I am good at selling. The world is like that, no one cares about its actual value. As long as it is well packaged and has a topic of conversation, it will be sought after. Without me, you'd still be a poor painter who can't get enough to eat, and you'd have to live on the street with your daughter. Do you still want to go back to those days of fear? Margaret was bluffed. Walter continued, in the future, you will be in charge of painting, and I will be in charge of sales. We can live a good life together. Thus, Margaret gave up the resistance and stayed in the studio every day, painting day and night. Walter, on the other hand, claimed to be the author of the Big Eyes series and was invited by a TV station to do an interview. Walter claimed that his creative inspiration came from the children who had lost their homes in the war and their eyes were full of sadness. The sensational story conquered the audience. He increased his publicity by donating the paintings to various celebrities and dignitaries. At the same time, he opened a gallery to sell these paintings at high prices. People's attention is getting higher and higher, and posters of the Big Eyes series are also sought after by everyone. But few people ask about the paintings hanging on the wall, because most of the people who come in can't afford such expensive paintings. So, Walter changed his mind and started selling printed posters. At first, it was five cents, then it was ten cents, still in shirt supply. At one time, the series of big eyes could be seen everywhere. Margaret, who hadn't been out for a long time, looked at the supermarket filled with her own works, but wrote Walter's name. She was very upset. She has never lead in her life, but now she is helping her husband, selling her works and soul. Her heart was so tormented that the customers around her seemed to stare at her with big eyes, which made Margaret feel suffocated. By posing as the author of the Big Eyes series, Walter became a well-known painter, and Margaret's mental stress grew. Noticing Margaret's abnormalities, Walter began to monitor Margaret closely. Margaret's best friend came to visit her home and inadvertently walked into Margaret's painting studio. Walter found out and yelled like crazy, kicked her friend out, and would not allow Margaret to invite anyone else to the house. Margaret was at her wit's end. She confessed to the priest and asked his advice. But the priest told her, I don't know what kind of things you're talking about, but a man is born to be a woman's master. You should trust your husband and listen to your husband. Margaret came home out of her mind, feeling that people shouldn't lie. But seeing Walter's sullen face, Margaret hid in the studio. Walter became increasingly nervous, and he constantly brainwashed Margaret, saying that if she let others know about this, they all constituted a fraud, they all had to go to jail, and then her daughter would be on the streets and sent to the orphanage. Margaret's nerves are on the verge of collapse, and the only person in the whole family to talk to is the family dog. That day, Margaret inadvertently found a box in Walter's room that she had never seen before. After opening the box, it was full of street scenes. Margaret thought it was Walter's work, but the signature at the bottom was an unfamiliar name when she took it out. Margaret suddenly realized that she had never seen Walter paint in public, and a terrible suspicion came to her mind. She looked at Walter's painting on the wall and scraped the paint on the canvas. 
There was another strange name hidden under it, and she shuddered. It turned out that Walter could not paint at all. His so-called experience was false and he was just a shameless villain of deceitfulness. At this point, Walter came up behind Margaret, who pointed to the painting and questioned Walter. Walter stared hard at Margaret and said, Yes, I can't draw, but what's the point? You can paint, but without me, who wants to pay for your paintings? Margaret was physically and mentally exhausted, and she tried to escape. But having experienced a failed marriage, she didn't want her daughter to go through it again. And so, Margaret endured it all. She stayed in the studio every day and painted almost numbly. Walter was soon invited to paint for the expo. He forced Margaret to finish the painting quickly. But once the work was exhibited, it was criticized by a well-known critic as being useless. Walter was angry and argued with the critic. The critic told him contemptuously, Your paintings are all over the street but their artistic value is not as good as a scrap of paper. Walter was shaking with anger, but he also did not know the art and could only spread his anger to Margaret. After drinking, he went crazy, and Margaret had to hide in the studio with her daughter. Walter threw a match through the keyhole into the studio, trying to burn Margaret and her daughter. Looking at the burning fire, Margaret finally chose to flee. With the help of their friends, they came to a small island in Hawaii and settled down there. A year later, she sent Walter divorce papers. Walter agreed to divorce on the condition that Margaret painted another 200 series of paintings with big eyes for him and gave up the ownership of all her works. Margaret had no choice but to compromise. This time, her daughter stopped her. With her daughter's and friend's encouragement, Margaret mustered up the courage. On the radio, she exposed Walter's imposter behavior in the past 10 years and announced that she was the real author of the Big Eyes series of paintings. Once the program was broadcast, everyone paid close attention to it. Walter was furious and found Margaret, but Margaret decided not to put up with it. She took Walter to court on charges of fraud and copyright infringement. In court, the judge asked the two to paint in public. Margaret smiled and she confidently picked up the brush. On the other hand, Walter fidgeted and didn't draw anything in the end. An hour passed, a brand new work was born under Margaret's brush, and the truth was clear. The film, released in 2014 and directed by Tim Burton, is based on actual events and the story of Margaret Keane, a female painter. In an era when women's rights are not fully respected, everything seems so absurd, but we can't help feeling it. There are still many places where this is still the case. After watching this film, we can easily feel sympathy for the heroine. On the other hand, without the unique marketing means of the hero, the heroine's paintings may never be recognized by people. This inevitably mixes people's selfishness after success. People are eager to succeed, no matter what methods and means are used compromise, or yield. Before success, the alliance of interests can be closely linked. After success, everything will face new challenges. I think the hero in the movie has something to sympathize with. What do you think? Friends who like this movie suggest to watch the full version of it. There are still many details for you to savor. Well, we will see you in the next video.